As Germany invaded the neutral country of Belgium, no one foresaw how long the war would last and how gruesome the cost would be. Over 65 million people fought. Over 20 million were wounded. Between 9 and 10 million died on the battlefield, and another 20 million lost their lives due to hunger and disease related to the war. The magnitude of the killing was unprecedented. In just the first three months of the war, nearly the entire original British army was wiped out. Despite all the carnage, the battle lines remained almost stationary in France. The Western Front, as it was known, was defined by two lines of trenches, zigzagging across northern and eastern France for thousands of miles. Wide enough for two men to walk abreast and stand erect to fire their machine guns, the trenches were choked with mire, rats, and lice. German soldiers occupied one line, Allied soldiers the other. Between them lay a no-man's land, filled with barbed wire and mud, smoldering with bomb craters. From time to time, soldiers would storm out of these trenches and attempt to overrun the enemy, only to be met with a hail of bullets. Both sides suffered hundreds of thousands of casualties while accomplishing practically nothing, as the battle lines remained essentially unchanged. Meanwhile, the tools of technology, which had provided prosperity for the industrialized world, were now being used to create more efficient and more ghastly weapons. A soldier described the shocking sight of a machine gun that could fire 500 to 600 bullets per minute. I saw trees as large as a man's thigh, literally cut down by the stream of lead. In 1914, the German army deployed their new cannon against Belgium. Big Bertha, as it was called, could hurl an 1,800-pound shell nine miles. A year later, at the Second Battle of Ypres, the Germans introduced poison gas to warfare. Soon, both sides used chemical weapons like chlorine, which suffocated its victims, or mustard gas that burned the skin and blinded its casualties. By 1916, the British Army began using tanks in battle with great success. Before long, however, German soldiers realized that flamethrowers, weapons that could shoot a stream of flaming gasoline, could be used to stop them. Balloons and then airplanes were converted into weapons of war. When Germany attacked the Belgian city of Liege in 1914, it was the first time civilians were killed by a warplane. Planes were fitted with machine guns and loaded with bombs, and soon began dueling in air-to-air -air combat. These dogfights became a common sight over the skies of Europe. Germany's leading fighter pilot, Manfred Richthofen, nicknamed the Red Baron by the British because of his brightly painted red albatross airplane, shot down 80 Allied aircraft before being struck by a bullet from the trenches and crashing to his death. If I should come out of this war alive, I will have more luck than brains. Even more destruction was waiting on and under the Atlantic Ocean as Germany pressed its Unterseeboots, its submarines, into the battle. German submarines, U-boats, patrolled the Atlantic, firing torpedoes on merchant ships, trying to deliver supplies to the Allies. It aroused the anger of Americans in particular because they felt that this was a violation of the principle of the freedom of the seas, long a cornerstone of United States foreign policy. Germany then launched a U-boat blockade in response to the British blockade along the German coast, which in theory prevented contraband, weapons and military supplies, from reaching Germany. But the British definition of contraband was wide-sweeping, including food and fertilizer for crops. 750,000 Germans died of starvation during the British blockade. 75,000 people lost their lives due to German submarine warfare. The blockades continued the pattern of war begun in the trenches. Everywhere, the fighting was inconclusive. While the new technologically advanced weapons made the lack of victories more devastating. <laughs> 